In this video, I'm gonna give you a quick preview of Olive, a video editing program that's free software, currently in development, available in alpha, so it's not ready for production work yet. And that is, and that's the most interesting part, targeted at professional editors. There are some rough edges, obviously, at this point, but that's quite unique in that all the features that Matt, the lead developer, is working on and the key bindings and the philosophy of the program is focused on professional editors, which is not the case, to my knowledge, with other video editing programs. And the developer is making really good progress so here's a quick edit I made with music from my friend Tayan. link in the description. And we're going to talk a bit about Olive's tools. The first strength I want to touch on is performances. What you're seeing right now is me scrubbing through raw footage, full HD, straight out of my camera. And it's pretty smooth, as you can see. No proxies in there. Although, just like with any professional video editing program, you can select your footage in your project Docker, right click and create proxies there to get extra snappiness, extra rendering performances if you are using a lot of effects. The interface is pretty classic with the project Docker in the top left corner where you can have an unlimited amount of bins to organize your files sequences, so edits that you can then put together different sections of your video or of a given project. You can import files by using the import button, but my preferred way of doing it is using Digicam, which I use to organize my photos and my footage to some extent. You can drag and drop files anytime, like so. You can display your project as a tree, so you can see a little more information about your files, or you can display it as a set of icons. From there, you can set the in and out points on any piece of footage by double clicking on it, which will open it in the media viewer in the center. You can click and drag your cursor to change the current frame, and then press I to set an endpoint. O for an out point, and you can drag and drop that clip onto your timeline to add it to it. You have the ability to add effects to your strips. So by default, you can control their position and scale, etc., uh, which you can control, I believe, from view here. If I change the view to a clip that's currently selected, I can click and drag straight in the sequence viewer that's on, in the top right by default and manipulate the strip from there. The scale is a little hard to pick at first, but see, you can manipulate the sequence right there and it will update the properties in the effects tab. There you can also add transitions or video effects. For example, if you want to stylize your video, but also to do color correction using the color correction module, which allows you to set the contrast of your strip a little better. I'm using a tablet at the moment and the support is not amazing, I must say. So there's a bit of work to do on that, but you can control the sliders pretty well. You can animate any property and there's a graph editor in Olive with Bezier curves to edit the, the keyframes. You also have a timeline here in the FX panel that's taking some space. I'm not sure what it's supposed to do. You have the timeline at the bottom with the toolbar on the left where you can select the classic tools like the razor to cut strips. You can use the select tool that also allows you to trim and to extend strips. You have the override behavior when you click and drag a given strip onto another, it's going to replace it if you want. You have a variety of tools, the ability to select as well using a square selection and you can delete or ripple delete, things like these. Note that as we make our own tools and we use Blender right now at GDQuest, I'm not the most knowledgeable as to what the default shortcuts are in Premiere, etc. 
but you can use Q to edit to the endpoints or previous cut. You can use W to go to the next cut. You can set in and out points anywhere on your timeline with I and O, and then shift space to play from the endpoint. Control K to cut with the keyboard anytime. I don't want to cover all of these because it's going to turn into a tutorial, but what I mean is that you have the default kinds of shortcuts you would expect from a proper video editing program. You can use T for transitions, so you can create cross dissolves, and you also have audio transitions, fade in and out, exponential or logarithmic that you can click and drag on any audio strip to add that kind of fade. So that's how I create the linear fade at the end that makes the audio you know, get lower and with that cross dissolve to fade out the video strip. There's one thing I really like about Olive is the discoverability of the keyboard shortcuts. If you go to the menus, you will see the keyboard shortcuts right next to every menu entry. So you can go to tools to see the tool shortcuts and explore the program from there. You also have some preferences you can set to customize how the program operates and it's themable with CSS, the entire interface. One thing that I particularly like is that Olive already has a command palette. You can type slash to open it and search for any action in the program, like cutting, for example, or setting the in and out points. Currently, it does not display the keyboard shortcuts. That would be a nice addition. But again, the program is in heavy development and new features and bug fixes are getting it. I must say I've had one or two crashes playing with increasing the speed of my strips or using some more maybe advanced features, but basic editing is already pretty stable. Then I would like to mention that it has some nice features already, like if you select an audio strip, you can auto cut the silences on it, those kinds of things. If we go check the project on GitHub, already 21 contributors after only one year in existence, this is pretty promising. Lots of stars, people watching it. And right now, Matt, if you go to the nodes branch, is working on a node-based compositing system built into Olive. This is, there again, really promising. And the thing that I like is I saw some professionals commenting in the issues which is there again, getting feedback from these persons who have experience with some other professional tools is going to help ensure that the program fits the needs of professionals, goes in the right direction to get good adoption over time and stays alive and goes as far as possible. Olive is on Twitter, on Discord, so that's where you can follow them and obviously on GitHub. The author also has a Patreon page where you can financially support the project if you so desire. We'll keep following it at GDQuest because the editor is pretty good for tasks where right now the Blender VSC is not as good for. We use the Blender VSC because we have custom tools that we can cut really quickly for screencasts and tutorials. Unfortunately, it's not as good for tasks such as working on live footage and color grading right now. If you want a tutorial to learn to edit a simple video, I can cover that for you. Please tell me in the comments below. But that said, and for now, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. See you in the next one.